Welcome back to the second video on computing variables. In this particular variable, we're going to be doing an average of three variables. They're uh, ordinal variables in order to make a scale variable. In the first video, we did one that added them together using three nominals. So this one's going to be doing an average. It's going to take essentially the same steps as I've got noted here in the coded syntax. First thing we're going to do is we're going to run frequencies for the original variables. And I'm working in the ESS 2002, that's the European Social Survey. And this particular measure is going to be looking at social benefits. So I've got three variables in here now. I'm not too concerned about their statistics. I'm just going to paste those into my syntax. Let's go take a look at them. And the first one here is social benefits make people lazy. As we can see, it's an ordinal variable going from agree strongly to disagree strongly. Frequencies look somewhat like a good normal curve there. And it doesn't look like we need to do anything with special recoding just yet, but we notice that the agree strongly is in the one position. The next one, social, social benefits, it's this one here. Social benefits make people less willing to care for one another. Kind of a curve there. Strongly agree to strongly disagree. Again, strongly agree is in the one position. And social benefits and services make people less willing to look after themselves and their family. Somewhat of a curve there. We strongly agree to strongly disagree. Again, strongly is in the one position. So looking along with our step two, it asks us if we have to do any particular recoding getting rid of variables we don't need, combi combining and collapsing them perhaps, but it looks like these are okay. So I'm just going to go ahead and look at our syntax. This is okay. So we can go on to the next step. If you recall from the first video, the next step here is something called Cronbach's Alpha. Cronbach's Alpha is a particular reliability analysis we're going to do from Analyze Scale Reliability Analysis. And we're going to find our variables. Once we have our variables here, we're going to go up to the statistics box, check scale if item deleted. Go ahead and click continue here. Again, we just make sure this is in alpha mode. It's there by default. We'll paste that in. We're going to go ahead and run this. And ideally, we want to have a Cronbach's alpha score of 0.7 or better. And here we have a 0.851. These variables work very well together. And we're just going to double check the scale if item deleted box. If I was to delete the lazy variable, our score would only be 0.844. So it's more advantageous to keep it in. If social services are, make people less willing to care for one another, 0.758, we definitely want to keep this one. And if they're less willing to look after themselves or their family, 0.77. So it looks like we've got the best score we can using these particular three variables. So we're going to be ready for the compute. I'm just going to go ahead and put my cursor in the right spot here so I don't lose my syntax. There we go. I'm going to go up to Transform, Compute Variable. And here's our little compute command. From And up here I'm going to type in the name of what I'm going to call this. I'm going to call it SOCBEN, short for Social Benefits. And up here I'm just going to give it a value, Opinion on social benefits. Continue. Now there's a couple ways we can do this. The first way is to go ahead and just start plugging them in and I'll put a parenthesis around it. Oh, there it is. We'll bring it in and then we will add it. And then we'll bring in the next one. This might look familiar to you. It's setting up in the same method that the previous video used, except it was in parentheses. And just like you're taking any other average, we would divide by the number of variables we're using. And then you can go ahead and click paste. That's one method of doing it. The other method is to just type in the word mean, hit your little parentheses, bring in the first guy, Comma space, 
bring in the next variable, arrow, comma, space, and bring in the next one. They'll both do very similar things. This one here has something to do with the missing cases. We're not going to get into too much of the technical differences between the two methods. For what you're doing, either one is probably okay. So we're just going to go ahead and click paste. There it is. We'll go ahead and run it. Now that's just going to go ahead and create the new variable. And again, you'll see it if you take a look at the bottom of your syntax or your data set. There it is, our new variable. Let's go ahead and run it. That's our last step, running the new frequency. There it is. And here's our scale. Total number of participants. And we've now transformed three ordinal opinion scales into an interval scale. Again, one is still strongly agree, five is still disagreeing strongly, except, and just like the other one, we now have additional points in between. And this is just a measure. When it was one here, all of our respondents agreed strongly. When it's two, they somewhat agreed or just agreed. Three, they're all neutral. Four, they disagreed. And five, they agreed strongly. The numbers in between are a measure distance between them. So between one and two, this is a measure 1.5. Half of the questions were strongly agreeing and strongly disagreeing. So it's just a mixture of them. As you go down the line, you go from a point of agreeance towards a point of disagreeance. And here are the percentages with them. Since this is an interval variable, it's ready to go for such tests as t-tests, ANOVAs, correlations, regressions, anything that requires an interval variable. But let's say you wanted to go ahead and now use this in a crosstab and chi-square, where interval variables aren't uh, very useful. And we might want to recode this back down to an ordinal variable something a bit more manageable. Let's just go ahead and take this and we're going to chop it into pro, moderate, and anti-social benefits. You, a couple ways you can do this. I'm going to use just a uh, gut intuition here and I'm going to say I'm going to take it from 2.5 to 3.5. That sounds like a good moderate. You might also notice that's fairly close, not exactly at the third points. 2.5 is around 30%. I'm actually going to be cutting it right here at 28 and 63. I just felt that on a 1 to 5 scale, 2.5 to 3.5 was sort of my moderate range for opinions. So I'm just going to go ahead and recode that in. And here you can see I just jumped ahead. Here is my recoding command. And my 1 to 2.33 became 1. Here was the 2.5 to 3.5 became 2, 3.67 to 5 became 3. I'm calling it the opinion on social benefits. And then I labeled 1 as pro, 2 as moderate, 3 as anti. And actually, I've come to think about that. I've got that the other way around. There we go. And then I also have the frequency variables for them into sock bend 3. Let's go ahead and run it. And here we are. 24.8% believe that the social benefits are not good for society. 40% were moderate and 34.8% were pro. It's not too bad of a distribution if you ask me.